see what we got next, Gail. So um, different perspective, right? Someone practicing HR in one of our startups, also you own some of your own businesses. Can you give us some perspective um, you know, on, on your experience and what small businesses and tech startups need to consider and tips on how they can implement some you know, HR practices on a shoestring budget? Well, one of the biggest things you can do is, of course, you all showed up, so you came, you're asking questions, you're yeah. thinking about what's the problem going to be. Think about what problem, it's risk management. Employee, managing people is risk management. Um, there are a lot of online sources that are completely free. The Society for Human Resource Management has a site, shrm.org, O-R-G. You can get all kinds of documents free to download. There are template form, you can get job descriptions, you, there are employee manuals. They're mostly in a, a doc format, so it's, you know, Word doc, you can customize it. The Department of Labor has tons and tons of information on job descriptions and job categories, yeah. and it's D Department of Labor or Wage, WHD, Wage and something. Anyway, I'll, I'll get that for you if you want. Wage and Hour Division. Um, the, ah, Wage and Hour Division. Wage, wage and Hour Division. division. All right. Um, tons of information there. I mean, it's, it's a very, very huge, <laughs> comprehensive website, both of them. It may take you some time to dig through, but it's free. Educate yourself, man. It's free. Yep. Um, one of the first and foremost things I would tell you is to, when you do get that first employee, find somebody to manage your payroll. Mm -hmm. If you have to do it yourself, maybe use a service. We, um, our company uses Paycor. There's pay checks, pay... Yep. And um, I think... A, a, B, D, P. There's yep. a whole bunch of different ones. All of these companies have an HR module that you can purchase in addition to, like, for, for us, we have, we have our HR lawyer, we have a lot of other stuff in place, but we use their payroll service, but if I wanted to, I could pay an extra little bit of money every month and I would have access to their HR department. And so basically, they give you an HR department that you can dial up and go, hey Sam, I got this problem, what, what can I do? And they can either help you or they can direct you to someone that can, can help you out. Someone, someone has to take responsibility from payroll. Don't hand it back and forth to, you know, if it's a husband and wife startup business, don't go, oh, it's my week to, to do it. Make it somebody's job consistently. Yeah. Um, the big, one of the biggest things I would tell you is don't discriminate. Even though the discrimination laws fall under certain numbers of employees, don't discriminate. Treat everybody alike, be consistent. It will serve you well because if you get two employees and your business is going to grow and then you have 200, if you set a good groundwork for treating everybody fairly and doing the right thing, it's going to pay you back in the end. Um, avoid hiring family and friends oh, yes. or spouses <laughs> yes. of employees. You do not want to go there. Um, we do. We have in the past hired people that were acquaintances here or there, and it can turn out all right, but I've also my first management job, I had to fire my best friend. And I was middle management, and she wasn't pulling her weight, and the boss came to me and said, it's you, it's her, or both of you, you choose. So I did what I had to do and told her that she was out. And it that is was very, very hard. That I actually hired my friend and yeah. had to give her some bad news in her review. Mm. She ran out of the room crying. Yeah. I said, if that was my friend, that would have never happened. So yeah, I, I 100% yeah, yeah. don't do that. Um, Husband-wife partnerships, those, that's a little iffy, but you know, it's, it all looks good in the beginning, but it, by the time the divorce happens, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's all bad. <laughs> all, all bad. Um, develop an employee manual at H S H R M. You can go download. You can download the, the the basics and then customize it. Make sure that it covers all of the pertinent. You know, when you start with it with a with a template like that, they've already thought through all of the important things like the FMLA, Leave Act, non-discrimination, equal employment opportunity. They've thought through all that stuff already. The language is there and it's already, in fact, that's what we did for our company. I downloaded it. I customized it. We took it to our attorney and he blessed it and we're, you know, yep. open. What, what could have cost thousands and thousands of dollars was, you know, a couple of days of work and a, and a lawyer bill for a couple At of hours. At what size would you say of a company? I mean, is this employee number one? one? You have to have one right off the bat. Because yeah. you, can't, you can't hire that first employee and then get five more 
and then go to them and go, oh, retroactive, one, two, three, and four, you all have to buy it. Here's your new rules. So yeah. if you just set it up in the beginning, you and you do have the, the, the opportunity at any point, you make it is written into the language, at any point you can change the, the, the document yeah. and reissue it. Yep. Um, but, but have those rules, and that's the be consistent, don't discriminate, treat everybody fair. Get the rules set down from the beginning and, you'll be, and it'll save you a lot of, a lot of headache in the, in the end. Um, keep very complete employee files. Um, you need to make sure that you have all of the legal documentation that was referred to. You need to make sure that you have any kind of information. Emergency contact, a lot of people don't really think of what's gonna happen if the building catches on fire. How do I get a hold of somebody's spouse? You need to have the employee's emergency information, their spouse's contact information, telephone numbers and emails yeah. at, a, at a bare that's minimum. That's a really good point. Um, if you're, and then if you get into health insurance, and that's a whole other thing, but you need you know, beneficiaries and stuff. But, but, but at a minimum, make sure you have good, good employee files that are complete and well-maintained. I and keep that doesn't a, cost you anything, by the way. Just some no, time. No, it's just, it's, it's, just it's just yep. the things that you need to do as a matter of business. Yep. I keep both paper and electronic. Everything that comes through my hands, I scan it, and then I have an electronic file because I don't trust either method of. A hundred percent. Why not some, have a backup? Something that's that important. Yep. You know, for something that's that important. Um, and make sure you have thorough job descriptions. If you don't, have, if you you can't hire a person to do a bookkeeper job and then another person to do the same kind of bookkeeper job and have two different job descriptions. You, you need to have, for each class of employee, you need to have a very thorough job description. You know, what are their working hours? What are, what are, the, what are they supposed to do? What are their measurables? When you hire that person, have a performance evaluation form established, get that set up. Also, you know, you, you can get all these things online somewhere. You can find them and you can customize them to yourself. But on day one, when you hire that employee, you go, here's, here's your key, here's your information, here's when you go to lunch, and by the way, here's what you're gonna be evaluated on in a year. And yeah. some people call them employee evalu evaluations. Some of them, I mean, the new catch term is performance evaluations yep. or performance planning process. There's a whole bunch of new fun names for it. But a bit, it, you know, the bottom line is you work for a certain amount of time and you get a review, so we both know whether we're on the same page. But give them that review form on the first day of their job. Yep. I make it a part of our employee manual, so it's in yep. there. Yep. They can't say, oh, I don't know. It's there. You read it, you signed it, you acknowledged it. Um, the, it's kind of a tender area, but make sure when you're uh, soliciting for people to work for you, you give a complete um, position and advertisement. Be real, kind of test it. We, we were uh, looking for some scientists in our life, and I was using scientific jargon, and I got a kind of a low turnout of applicants. And then I changed up the language and I got a great field of applicants. So it, you know, it's, if, you, if you put up a job application that you think is just perfect on Indeed and you get three people that are not qualified, go back and see what, what your language is. Maybe you've been too specific for your industry, maybe you've just done it wrong. So that, you know, there's a lot of reasons. There's a lot of reasons why you don't get results. But um, when you when you do start going out advertising for help, think about how what yeah. what's the reader gonna how's yeah. the reader gonna. And we will get it. again. We will right. come, come to that. I don't have the date yet, but yeah. we will get it. That's a really important point. We'll get into some more detail yeah. about that. And just time. just interject here on that one. If you're doing advertisement, you're gonna use something like Facebook, for example, to do your ads. Be careful because we're seeing a lot of litigation now where. Someone is going to say, you know, I need to hire that particular person, but they're only going to tailor their ads to 25 to 36 year olds, for example. Oh, right. And so, course. because Facebook yeah. and those other platforms allow you to tailor who actually sees the ads, you could be opening up yourself to all kinds of litigation issues because of who that ad is tailored to. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Yeah. Again, evaluate the job performance regularly. Don't just wait until the end of the year. If somebody's doing something wrong, talk to them about it because oftentimes things can be solved. Um, and if you do have issues, document. If you, uh, you know, whatever, whatever the problem might be it, between you and your employee or your manager and your employee, make sure you get it straightened out because a lot of people wait until it's too late and it festers and then they're fired. And if, that's not, not always necessary. Sometimes if you go through the process of um, 
training, retraining, talking, go, hey, how can we make this better? What's, you know, are you having a problem? Am I not being an effective manager? Sometimes things can be That's a really good be, point. Things can be cured. And yep. because, well, because it's really. Could, with go. that, though, as well, you never want an employee to be surprised. If their time with the company has come to an end, they should be aware of that as you're aware of it. So if they're having problems, that should be communicated to them. So if that point comes, mm -hmm. It actually makes the whole process a lot simpler and a less, lot less complicated and less but, painful. Well, and, and less it's painful. expensive and time-consuming and stressful to to do the job search process. Yeah. Um, in our company, I, I and Alan work together as a team. Alan is the director, the science director, and we have set up. You know, we have a set of questions. We have a matrix that we when when, when we put up an ad, we get results, we score them, we try to be, you know, again, be very fair and make sure that you treat everybody the same, not only in the employment process, but in the search process. Um, the payroll, get a payroll system that you can use. Some of them aren't that expensive. There's, um, I think I already told you, payroll. There's one called Gusto that's pretty cheap. It's, I mean, I think we pay for 15 employees, it's a couple hundred dollars a month, but they make sure all of our taxes yeah. are filed appropriately. Yep. And I'll tell you right now that that has been an issue with some of the startups I've been part of um, where we weren't doing it right. And then all of a sudden we get this letter from the government and we owe a ton of money. Well, when you're a startup, you don't have that kind of cash. I mean, the government's not messing around, right? So we literally, I've seen a startup fail for that very reason. So we're spending a few hundred dollars up front to do it right. So yeah, there's two two parts of the government that will kill a small business, at least two. But the two main ones that I know of are the sales tax people and the employment tax people. Yep. Because if your your whole your yes. your fiduciary responsibility is to collect that money and pay it, it's not your money. So yep. you, well, that's I, the other thing. When you collect it, right. if you don't pay it, uh, yeah, it's it, that it's, is the big issue. <laughs> it, it, there's all kinds of yeah. bad lawyer things that we could be told about. That's right. I'm sure you've <laughs> anyway. seen them all. So. Um, keep up with laws, laws and regulations. Again, going back to sh the sh SHRM website, they have to, you can you can become a you know they'll they'll feed you information daily or more often than you really want to get it. Um, there's a lot of places your payroll company will like my payroll company sends me uh, information yep. every couple of days. And if you're part of Launchpad, we also yeah. um, have that help here yeah. too. So. And my last bit of advice is get a good attorney. Um, it will save you money in the long run. They often will not charge you very much to become a customer. Sometimes they'll do a free consultation, but make sure it's not your brother-in-law's sister's cousin. Make sure it's somebody good that is a that is an employment attorney or a business attorney that can direct you in the right way. Thank you. Very good.